preparing live stream. Yes. All right. Here we go. Now uh, we are being live streamed. Got it. Got it. Click the got it on all the devices. Welcome, welcome everyone to tonight's double feature open mic. We have Karen Garibrandt and Karen Scott in the house. Welcome to Red or Green Books and the word is right. Red, R-E-A-D and right, W-R-I-T. Why? Because poetic license, right? We just, we're sassy. Uh, sat, it's just sass is all it is. All right. Uh, so to, uh, tonight we were listening to music by the band Kalisha. Uh, they are here locally in Albuquerque, and we were listening to their uh, album Under the Olive Tree by Olive Tree Records. And I just want to shout them out because anytime I get to work with local authors and local musicians and local artists, I just love it. I always put them on my shows uh, before we actually record and all of that great stuff. All right. So, all right, Shaq, where'd my, oh, there's my thing. All right. So let me, let me get to the list. So people cannot freak out too much, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you everything about how tonight's gonna work, so you don't have to worry. I've got Rich Boucher, Rick Spisak, Valerie Loveland, Terry Rose Jertson, C. Santos, and Shocky G. If I missed anyone who wants to get on the open mic list, uh, just drop your name again or send me a DM. If I missed it, I do apologize. I'm not trying to miss it, I promise. Uh, there's just a lot happening between two devices, two features, two chats, two, <laughs> two rooms. Like, it's just a lot. Uh, so if I if I missed your name, I, I deeply do apologize. It's not intentional, but I will remedy that by putting you on the list. I right, welcome, welcome, um, Nancy Helgeson, Shaki G, David, Makia, I hope I'm saying this right. If I mispronounce it, I again, I'm so sorry. Stephanie, Rachel, C, Valerie, Terry Rose, Jerson, Karen, both of our Karens are here tonight. Rick Spisak, Terry Collins, Carrie Samba, Rick, Rich Boucher, and of course, I'm your host, Marissa Prada, today. So, so excited to have everyone. So, here's how, how tonight's going to work. Uh, we With the double features, we tend to go about 15 minutes on the open mic. We'll bring up our first feature. That generally is whoever is in the room first. However, both of you are in the waiting room at the same time. So if one of you needs to get to uh, something, you just let me know. If not, I usually go in alphabetical order. So being that your first name is a Karen, we would go to the last name, which would mean Karen Carabrant. If my math does compute, uh, that would mean the G comes before the S, uh, which would mean Karen Garibrandt would be first. Um, yes, in all honesty, that is a lot of how my brain works. Uh, so we'll let Karen G go first. And, and each of the feature readers have 20 minutes. We'll go back to the open mic, do another 15, 20 minutes, bring up Karen Scott. She's got a full uh, 20 minutes, and we'll go back to the open mic list and finish it all there. Open micers, you got five minutes to read. Uh, you don't have to take the whole time, but please don't go over it. Don't do a 10-minute monologue. I don't have a dick. I don't want to be a dick. And so I don't want to have to mute you or pause you or, like, say ding, ding, ding. Like, I hate the people that do that in the open mic, so I'm not going to ding you or be a dick. We like dick. We don't like to be dicks, right? Uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, so uh, this is a live poetry open mic, but you're welcome to bring music, monologues, uh, prose, whatever you prefer to do today. Uh, uh, trigger warnings are not required, but if you feel that your piece does require a trigger warning, we will champion that for you, but please understand you can hear anything at any time about anything. If you need to mute yourself, step out the room, do whatever you need, turn your camera off, that's totally fine, that's valid, we'll hold space for that. Uh, not a problem. Uh, that being said, uh, there's no censorship on this open mic, uh, save for hate speech. You can say shit and dick and fuck and pussy and all those great, wonderful words. The only thing you're not allowed to do is bring any hate speech whatsoever. If I feel you're a threat to anyone in this room, you'll be gone, baby gone, and not allowed to fuck back in. You gotta be grown, all right? Uh, I run a tight ship. It's a lot of fun. So let's stay having fun and um, don't be a dick. Like dick, don't be a dick. All right, so uh, I don't see any further comments in the chat for the open mics. I'll go through the list one more time. We got Rick Boucher, Rick Spisak, Valerie Loveland, Terry Rose Jerson, C. Santos, and Shaki G, the poet. Uh, so that being said, I'll go ahead and open the open mic uh, by breaking the ice with all of you today. Uh, this is a poem. It's a short poem. It is from my book, If Stories uh, Could Save Us, and it is titled This Summer. Excuse me, that summer. I can't even get my own fucking title right. It happens sometimes. It's been a very long week. All right, that summer. There was a tomato once in my garden that split in the middle of a rainstorm. The main stem snapped and I was sure it would die within a week, but it refused to. 
It was still green and the fruit still alive. It hardened itself on the injury, healed itself in the most mysterious way. It no longer grew up, but changed course and grew down then out along the ground outside of the black fabric planter bag. The leaves had no problem growing down rather than up because the sun still fed its need to feed me. Those small, yellow, boisterous cherry tomatoes and my mouth never wanted for anything more that summer. I wish my heart could say the same. All right, let's go. Let's go tonight, tonight, tonight. I'm so excited. And I got the go ahead from Karen Garibrand to send her book to print today. Uh, so I'm so freaking excited to be like clicking the button on that. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Rich Boucher. Uh, is one of, of our Albuquerque poets. And of course, when Karen comes to Albuquerque, we all get to Kumbaya and it's like wonderful. If you guys have not uh, thought about coming to Albuquerque, get your ticket. We're having a summit. The New Mexico Poetry Summit is gonna be September 8th, 9th and 10th. Both Rich Boucher and Karen Garibrandt are gonna be here. Also Shaki G who's in the room, she's releasing her debut book of poetry right alongside uh, Karen Garibrandt. Nancy Helgeson who's in the room, she's gonna be here as well. So get your tickets. I'll Put all that stuff in the chat. Let's go. Uh, we'll do Rich, Rick Spisak. We'll see where we are on time, Valerie. So so sit tight, Valerie. If uh, if these two are fast, then I'll bring you. If they're not fast, then I'll then we'll break. And then Valerie, you'll lead our open mic when we come back after Karen G. All right, Rich. I hope that was a long and daunting intro to your poem, since you absolutely love poems and poets who do long daunting intros to their work. All right, Rich Boucher. <laughs> it wasn't wasn't really long enough. You have to go longer and longer. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to uh, dedicate, if I'm good tonight, then I dedicate my performance to Karen Garibrandt. I love you, Karen. And uh, it's so good to see your face. This is a poem I had published in Unknotting the Line, the Poetry in Prose, edited by David Myshin and Scott Wiggerman, a collection of Southwest prose poetry. And this is called A Long Weird Sueño About Xeriscapes, Hookers, and Fry Bread. I started hitchhiking my way back home from Magdalena around midnight. And about three hours into the walk, I forgot where I lived. Stumbling past small brick buildings with blue doors and fearful suns bolted to the doors. Tattered pages from ancient newspapers blew around the corners of the town square while the stars overhead shook and tilted like maybe whoever was seeing them was drunk. I found myself wondering if I actually lived way out where missiles are tested to see if they still explode correctly. Staggering along Route 60 in the dark, the whole time hoping headlights might find me suitable from behind. Thumbing it so hard under the small town moon that I wound up with stigmata. Broken glass on the side of the road glimmering the moonlight back to me intermittently recalling that wherever I did live, they had year-round Fourth of July gunfire. Xeriscapes escapes aplenty, mountains named for the blood of Christ, megachurches next to the Walmart where a pretty hooker named Brie once told me she could only orgasm in French and that I would never get to see that. Monsoons the size of a glass of water and all of a well-planned sudden I misplace a few hours. And then my bed comes rushing up to my face as if it missed me so damned much. I should probably tell you that I totally had a sueño mal about the end of the world, and it was terrible because in the dream, I never got a chance to try fry bread. I got up out of bed and took a walk outside just in time for a strange morning thunderstorm to begin. I didn't look up. I looked down. The blacktop in the apartment parking lot 
started getting dotted with drops of rain. But the sky was as blue as it wanted to be anyway. Thank you. I just love Rich B. Share. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> Uh, let's go, Rich. It was so good to see you also on Wednesday night. He he laughs at me for winning slams when I go over on uh, the time penalties. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, next up, we have Rick Spisak. I'm so, so excited. Rick Spisak's book, Stone Poetry, is going to be launched through Red or Green Books later this summer. Uh, so I'm super, super excited to be wrapping up that project. Keep your ears to the ground. Uh, his book will be released. And Rich, uh, Rick, remind me uh, to uh, to do the the book launch date for you. Uh, that there's a lot happening in my brain, but the you know your brain can help my brain stay on track. All right, let's go. We got Rick Spisak, and then um, we'll see where we are on time. So Valerie, stay tuned. And then if we're you know what? No, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make an executive decision. I'm gonna say Rick, Valerie, and then Karen Garibrand. That way no one has to wonder. And and so Karen has a few extra minutes to take her time. All right, Rick, whenever you are ready. Thank you so much. I dedicate this show to my dear publisher, Marissa Prada, who I'm so pleased to work with. And of course, when you have stereo Karens, what can you say? But huzzah, huzzah. And now, in honor of also the magical state of New Mexico, I bring you two travelogues. Here we go. This first one is called Five Fragrant Fables of Florida. Part one. A man carves a trailer park from a single palm tree. Billy Harkness had a passion, and although he admitted it was dreadfully, woefully out of fashion, he'd spent a dozen years or more carving from a single palm tree softwood core, a miniature trailer park for all to see with their little picket fences, chase lounges, and color TVs. He had to carve under a microscope late at night and all the day. He never listened to those voices who always murmured nay. He carved his people fat and thin. He even put their dogs and kitties in, their little lawns, their tiny trees, even a few with scraped up knees, their sprinklers and security gates, one stacked high with old fruit crates, their sunburned noses, sunglasses too, wearing sandals, flip-flops, and some who driving golf carts drove right on through. Part two, a man collects samples of pills of every party drug used in the 60s and 70s. He collected reds, he collected lewds, he selected all the ones that people used. He got acid, he got speed, he even found the ones that made you bleed. He found the round ones and the ovals, the few that created neural novas. He selected pink ones, blue and greenies, even ones that looked vaguely obscene. Paper acid, window pane ones that helped you cope with rain, jellied ones to help you dream, some to cure you from nicotine some to chew and some to swallow, some you'd be better off if they were hollow, shiny black ones to keep you up, some after which you've taken you should never drive a truck, ones to chew you out already, ones you've taken which you won't walk steady, just loll and pitch, so best get ready, his drug menagerie, <clears throat> his great collection, and besides, he'd made some great connections. Part three, a man trained a clutch of baby alligators to play Anagata de Vida on the bells. Fresh from their eggs, these baby gators were introduced to tingling bells hung from taters that take your cue from pits of food dangled there beneath their snood, sometimes fish, sometimes froggies. After these, at last, it seems they were rendered groggy. They just responded to iron butterfly. I don't understand it, but watch them fly. They jump up on their two hind feet. They ring their bells. God knows why. Anacada DeVita seemed to stir a little something down in their middle. You know, if only they could play the fiddle. And watch these little creatures leap and snap. They'd learned Anacada DeVita before their nap. From the organ sound, they use their feet on an m &E organ, and it's all complete. Part four, marching kittens on parade. She lined them up one summer day tail to nose, expecting them, even urging the ten to wander, play. But this clutch of kittens like to march, their movements circumscribed like they're dipped in starch. One by one, they paraded on by. They're expected at Macy's parade in July, or maybe Thanksgiving, I'm up in the air. But if they climb up on those balloons, they'll need some stairs. And then, when they're shooting, roughing, tooting across the sky, in a blink of an eye on a zooming balloon, it's in the final clause exactly why. And then finally, part five, a man marries every one of a family's seven daughters in age sequence. 
He met Melissa. It was May. He proposed marriage that very day. It wasn't long before he met June. And oh my gosh, in his heart, he found more room. He told Melissa that he'd met June, Melissa's older sister, who could always be counted on to ferry a merry tune. And now, in his heart, he found room for June. And uh, this upset Melissa. She was not gay. That was her cousin who never seemed to want to stay. So Melissa dismissed this loving guy and asked the lovely June when she's about it. She knows why, and there's no doubt. No sooner had he changed his nest, he met another sister by the name of Bess. He wooed her, he sought her, and then, by goodness, he adopted her deep in his heart, or just for a while, that's what he thought. He had decided, unrequited, she was the best of all the daughters in that family's nest. June came through the front door, but didn't dally. That's exactly when he met the elder sister, Sally. Sally came in arm in arm with little June, and she decided to move into the upstairs room. But no sooner had she loaded in that she and Bobby came within, my friend. Sally would stood in June's wedding party, yet surprisingly soon she'd laid down with Bobby. A familiar tune for this well-groomed fellow, June was okay with her sister staying, despite knowing she was regularly with her husband laying. But the last straw was broke with little sister, Carola, who traveled wide by barge and boat, who traveled fa-la-la by bus and electric car. So when younger sister Monique joined the fun, that was it, old June was done. She could never with her sister party across her husband. She was far too haughty. These six sisters all found Bobby a people pleaser, although perhaps a little naughty. Let's go. Oh my God, I just love Rick Spizak. He's also got an incredible podcast, Post of the East. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that he does. It is it's just so much fun. And he's been gracious and kind in um, how he extends opportunities to poets on his podcast. So, yes, it is just, it's such, it's, yeah, revelations. <laughs> revelations. I think I would sum you up in one word. Ah, that would be it. Uh, let's go. There's uh, no nobody like you rick all right we're gonna keep going up valerie loveland up next oh. then we'll go back to the open mic list we got terry rose jertson c santos shocky g uh welcome everyone who is just joining us if you, you would like to read tonight please let me know so welcome cynthia welcome nikki uh if you would like to read tonight i can add you to the list not a problem don't worry and if not that is okay too all right miss valerie Okay, uh, so this is about um, a uh, like an owl pin uh, that glows in the dark that Avon used to sell in the 80s. Uh, meet my meet glowing Avon owl again. Welcome home, I say, to an owl who never lived here. I say meet, but I mean bought again. I met and lost him in 1982. He is a pin and also a pendant but I never wore him. I only held him as if my hand was a cavity in a dead tree. The glowing Avon owl is winking at me again. He only winks when he's going to get me in trouble, but I have never seen his winking left eye open. He still glows when I take him into the dark, and I think I know what he means by that. In 1982, I showed him glowing to a girl in her bedroom closet my hair stuck to my sweaty face. I couldn't figure out why her mom was so mad. Who wouldn't want to see an owl glow in the dark? We all wore ruffles in 1982. I was seven, but he is the only one still wearing them 40 years later. Like so many things from my childhood, our relationship ended when I put him in my mouth and swallowed him whole. Woo! Let's go. Yeah. Mm. Put him in my mouth and swallowed him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of how, like, uh, snakes can unhinge their jaws and they have these file teeth at the back of their mouth that can, like, grab and pull, kind of like claws. It's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> maybe Rick's uh, crocodile poem is, but just, we're going to go with this today. Uh, so that's, it's just, that's the way we're going to be today. All right. I'm super, super excited. Uh, I've met Karen Garibrandt in person. I have had the opportunity to go um, with her to lunch and to do lots and lots of things. I don't know <clears throat> why at this current moment, my thing is not loading. So give me just a sec, Karen. 
and I will try and pull it up here. Uh, I don't know why it's not loading loading your bio. Oh, darn Holio. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Terry Rose, are you are you free? We could we'll bring Terry Rose and then I will troubleshoot my phone. I don't know why my phone is being is being um quirky. Terry Rose, are you ready? You want to go and I'll troubleshoot this and then bring Karen up. I am ready. I just lost the picture though. Hang on, because my phone likes to play games. Um uh, hmm. I get it back. Oh well, can you hear me? Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna read something out of the book. I need my glasses. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, here we go. Eyeballs. Can I get a dollar? Can I get a dollar means that you have at least a dollar because they know you can't get anything with that dollar anymore. Can I get a dollar means, can you help me? Do you see me? Do not walk past acting like you don't. Look at me in whatever state I am in and recognize that this is the human condition, my condition. And you need to do the right thing and give me that dollar because the almighty dollar has taken the place of God, your God. Well, and then I have another short piece. Uh, hmm. Once this is love is a mystery I don't understand. It's on page 39 of my book, Chameleon Chronicles. Once sizzling due to a five year self imposed abstinence from another dysfunctional pairing. And when the fast was broken, thirst quenched over and over again until left exhausted of any future desire, came 10 years of obligatory wifely duties, leaving me exhausted of any future desire to sizzle. Left to fizzle. That was 10 years of my life that I will never get back, which left me exhausted over the futility of sizzling sex and marriages that die a slow and pointless death, unions that bring relief when finally over, fractured relationships that still hold the mystery of how they were sewn together with a dull needle. When we last spoke, we both agreed that we failed to answer the impossible question or silence the infinite yearning of brokenheartedness caused by misunderstanding this mysterious thing called love. Let's go, Tara Stritson. Oh, you know, that is so dark. It doesn't do your cover justice. Your cover is incredible. Uh, Terry Rose was part of our, our 2022 debut poets who we launched last year. Her book, Chameleon Chronicles, is wonderful. It is full of artwork and photography and blackout poems, white up poems, found poems, uh, images she drew. Like, it's just... It's so much, um, so much fun stuff. Uh, you and Rick Spisak are very much in the same vein, I think, uh, as far as what you guys do. It's so much fun. So uh, thank you so much, Terry Rose, for coming through. Super excited to have you. All right, so we're going to bring up our first feature tonight, Karen Garibrand. And thank you so much, y'all, for being patient with the technology, right? We are living in the era of technology and uh, we are kind of technology's bitch now <laughs> since COVID. Uh, if anyone would else would like to read, I have C. Santos and Shaki G on the open mic list. So welcome those who are just joining us. Uh, welcome Christopher, if you would like to read, uh, we sure would, would like to have you. If not, that is okay too, it's not mandatory, all right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and read Karen's bio, uh, her book, driving into midnight uh pre-orders are on sale now you can message her reach out to her all that good stuff get your it's only 15 dollars plus five dollars shipping us if you uh want to bless her 
uh, by getting a copy of her book. Uh, she would love that. She'll send it to you, signed and all that uh, amazing, amazing stuff. She will be here in September also for the New Mexico Poetry Festival. Uh, Rich Boucher will be reading. I will be reading. Shaki G will be there also reading. So get, uh, you know, get involved and come to New Mexico. Even if you think you can't, we are a real place. Uh, we are part of the United States. We speak English. You do not need a passport. You're not crossing the border. You won't be kidnapped. It'll be fine. Uh, I'll oftentimes have to say this, right? Because we are part of the United States. All right. I, I need to do a whole slam piece about this. All right, here we go. Karen Garibrand, aka Karen G, co-founded C Lit Literary, a woman, queer, gender outlaw, open mic. Uh, she was founded board member of Girls Rock Camp ATL and slam manager of the Art Amok Slam. She's operated as a poet and organizer in Atlanta for 20 plus years. A clock holder, scorekeeper, MC, bout manager, tournament director, and PSI secretary with a streak of attending every big event from 2004 to 2017. Karen loved slam poetry. She loves editing and coaching. She stepped away from organizing to embrace her own poems again. They are made possible by Billy Tuggle and a, bu a bunch of other folks who I'm not going to read all their names, but you can read their names by uh, getting her book. She writes about love, grief, loss, and experiences. Uh, the late Gabrielle Boulain, and I am going to butcher these names, described as all of this is true, none of this is real. She's famous for her hugs and being a loud cheerleader because life is short. Uh, you can find her on Instagram, K G, excuse me, K G A R R A B. Punk is her gender, Q is their sexuality, answering to she, they pronouns. She came out in DC and the Riot Girl era, so DIY and Fugazi inform her foundation. Reach out, ask her lots and lots of questions. She's just super fantastic. I want to have lunch with her again when she gets here. Y'all unmute your mics, please. Give it up for the one and only Karen. Get after it, as the young people like to say. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. That's the whole fucking bio. That's pretty much my life. Um, yeah. So uh, I am made possible also by Saturday Night Poetry Exchange, whose members are in the room right now who I love, um, as well as a Thursday reading group and Java Speaks, which is, Java Speaks is every Sunday night out of Atlanta and we are still virtual because that's the world we live in. Um, and I am in New Jersey at the moment with my mom's portrait over my shoulder. Um, she would have loved this. So I carry her with me. And um, a lot of my book is uh, material that was written uh, during COVID, around COVID, and afterwards. Say yes to detective shows in languages other than English. Joy is reading and watching crimes with deliverable solutions all at once. Say yes to dark chocolate Nutella frosted cake with ice cream and Cool Whip as dessert, but also as an opening wedge with coffee first thing in the morning, thereby becoming a whole breakfast food group. Say yes to screaming frogs under full moonlight, turtles fucking on a log, Geese flying in formation at sunset, spending an afternoon watching a robin build her nest. Say yes to the writing course that makes you look up words, read a whole catalog of beginnings, and come up with your own. Say yes to coloring with whatever pencils are available during Zoom meetings, webinars, staff development, and online coffee gossip hours. Say yes to online gossip coffee hours. Say yes to quarantine, lockdown, maskless online shopping, the free trial for Instacart, and giving the shopper encouragement, praise, and an extra good review. Say yes to post-midnight drives, windows rolled all the way down, belting out Prince's get off. 
even at the stoplight, but especially towards the skyscrapers with the blinking violet cyclops eye. There's that right there. Living with slash as a moon, week 82 of the plague. Y'all, sometimes it feels like a secret, a thick sock footed whisper sliding on wood hard floors. Anxiety and panic attacks get worse with age because we've seen more knives twisting guts, because we're closer to our own mortality, because loss is a gape. I have more nightlights in my house now than when I was a child. When I wake up in the morning, autumn leaves shimmering from sunlight, breeze, and dew, I'm happy to wake up. Now, having known poets who didn't, now having grief somnia so often, candles, incense, audio books try as soporific props, and the edibles and the melatonin only go so far. Waking up means I've slept. This is how it is when you live with the moon, as a moon, as a mirror, as a light source that is also reflective. I know I'm a mirror, susceptible, and an Aries. So narcissists are my kryptonite. I set up barriers of protection with altars everywhere, dried flowers, bones, feathers, broken clay figurines, little goddess cards pulled for every full moon and season shift. That's a thanks and a shout out to Anna Martinez and Jasmine Cuffey in Albuquerque. All of this and still I find myself with windows rolled down outside a hospital or overwhelmed by two big buildings with beeps and buzzes, reminding myself to breathe, to keen my way out. Balling is not sustainable. There is a grace in that, which is better than any apology from a sociopath. I know how to self-soothe, to extravagantly pour real maple syrup in my coffee, add that bit of ice cream or homemade hazelnut syrup from my favorite barista before a commute. And when anxiety becomes like a storm, I know it will pass. My vagus nerves, just need to feel a thing through before letting it go. And that knowledge is a power source, is knowing I slept tight and the bed bugs didn't bite. Dude, that shit right there, y'all. Some realness. Okay. Um, and then ask for help. Part one, the machines and the people in lab coats and paper gowns will make you feel small and not small in the way a large landscape will make you feel small in a good way. They will make you feel small in a curious experiment or you are just a woman, a freak in hysteria kind of way. I imagine dying is like what it feels like passing out with the lightheadedness, the stars of the lids of your eyes, but open, the heaviness of your limbs until you can lie down, the whooshing of your own heart making what people say around you fade, a kind of pre-nausea, a body deciding to shut down in an array of messages that breath and vagus nerve can only mildly regulate. Words will make you feel small. Words over phone lines you have to dial and press in an endless stream of numbers into, like dead social security numbers and the numbers 
of the deceased associated with their accounts, papers with raised seals, fax and copy machines of endless over and over again, pieces of proof, even the stamps and the address labels will make you feel small, bureaucracy, government authority and the routine of your worth distilled into numbers will make you feel small. The not knowing what you are doing will make you feel small. The traveling behind masks and toll roads will make you feel small, small in the God's eye of the universe looking down at a road at an, as an arterial vein, small. You are a speck and you know it's small, but like the cell in the Petri dish and like the faces of those you can only meet in dreams now, your small body hurtling through time and the smallness of it still contains worlds and stories from back in the day that only you know. You are big worlds of survival with big feelings. Your own bad decisions you overcame, the big of you and the things that are so big you had to give them up like addictions. You are so big, like the love that spills from your body over and over again, like the way a stomach has big hunger if you forget about it. You are so big, there are days of your life you can't even remember. The blur of your life is so long, your love is so huge, your spark touched so many other worlds and stories that alone is an impossible idea. The external world brings you smallness. If you reach out and remember your bigness, your loveness, you can form the questions, ask for what you need and not be alone in this world that brings you so much smallness. Um, gonna do a couple more, um, uh, because I'm in this house, um, and I've had many stages of being in this house since my father passed away. And now I am, now this house is my house, which is an adjustment and, and um, doing work on it. This is called carpet ripping. Listening to the sound of carpet ripped up from a slab's floor, I'm in the other room, the one outside the sun porch. I hear two voices inside. My nose is filled with something like dirt, a kidhood odor of cactus and concrete. The sound of the ripping is visceral. This is the carpet my father stood on to receive news of my mother's passing. This is the carpet of mold, of decay, of rot. This is the carpet my dad fell and died on, and I can't go in that room. I hear the ripping and think of what's been torn away from life in this timeless time when years, clocks, schedules lost their meaning. I think of how much energy I used to spend in full rooms inside with friends, with all my teeth showing. How even as masks come off, I long for just eyes over edges, relying on reading them. As I hear the ripping, I don't know what is left of the me from before this. The stripping away to the bones of who and what and where to set intentions. I feel people slipping away from virtual squares into real life boxes. The ripping of the carpet is just more of the ground underneath me shifting, unanswered, pulling up roots and familiarities. The word familiar reshaping what I already know. Friends, our family. I hear the ripping while I notice I still have feet and can stand on my own or ask to stand with a friend and lean an ugly cry into available shoulders, that nothing happens in a vacuum, even in isolation. Isolation is a sort of lie. The lesson of the last few years is to ask for help and it is okay. 
to just sit here, to take a breath, to take a break and embrace stillness, to be still. Yes, y'all. Uh, that has been the major arc of uh, lessening from the last few years uh, to me um, is to ask for help. And when you ask for help, it's like a door opening and then more doors open. And um, yeah, my life has changed so much for the better by just asking for help. And I'm usually the person who offers help to other people. So believe me, that is a fucking lesson. It really is. Um, and now I want to read this. This is sort of like the third title of my book. Marissa really was pushing for this one. I feel like maybe this poem is going to be uh, the next book, maybe, with more stories. Okay. There are women who hold skulls. There are women who hold skulls who reverse Medusa by Carvaggio and instead carry the heads of those who wronged them even if those heads are invisible to naked eyes. And then I hit my phone and that poem disappears. Hey, you can buy the book and that poem is in it. No, I'm, I'm just kidding y'all. I'm not gonna tease you like that. I'm gonna find it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> even if those heads are invisible to naked eyes, already ghosts, already irrelevant, residue. There are vigilante women who hold skulls, fingers through empty eye sockets, bowling balls of retribution. And then there are everyday women who hold skulls with their very own necks, haunting those who think themselves kings by wearing necklaces and pendants to ward off beheadings. I am one of those everyday, maybe sometimes women, thankful for the skull I hold, the way the teeth in it hold back the pork tongue word, the insane bonfire of lies tucked in the corners of my brain, grateful for the skull that just holds me just this shy of hysteria and furiously alive. That's that shit right there. The title maybe of the next thing that might be coming out. And then I want to close with this one um, because it's a love poem. <laughs> and a love poem is still going, is still happening. There, right here in this room. Ask for help, part two for Kelly. Ask for help and love answer. Love asks a lot of questions and doesn't have conversations under an hour. Love calendars plans and makes notes for the future. Love would never call you stupid for a stupid thing you did. Love brings a ring to an accidental honeymoon suite. Love keeps eggshells in cartons or the trash, never on the floor. Love trusts you enough to fall asleep in your arms. Love kisses you like last chocolate in missing bowl. Love turns and unwraps your sandwich for you when you can only use one hand. Love holds your hand during the blood draw. Love appears with a vanilla milkshake, but not in your yard. Love asks what you need and really wants an honest answer. Love says things about glue and isn't afraid of how cheesy that is. Love melts you from the inside out. Love likes making laundry with you. 
love shows up and keeps showing up. Love sends you funny pictures when you're stressed the fuck out. Love streams movies. And love loses the poem. Love loses the poem and scrolls looking for it because she still wants to share it with you. Love streams movies with you on weeknights. Love is your friend who no longer wants to be just your friend. Love casts a spell in a Lowe's parking lot, one we visited earlier today, with only her eyes over a mask and you are never the same. Love left out a lot of this poem because it's still being written, y'all. Thank you all so much. I love you all. Thank you. And I look forward to listening to y'all. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. here for you Might I ask you a question? Might I ask you a question, Karen? Who cares? AJ Houston in the house. Let's go, AJ. Karen, might I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question, that? Karen? What's that? Do you still love me like you said you love me back in the day? No way, baby, always. Karen, <laughs> next time you're in Albuquerque, I'm buying you two dinners. Yes. But, but I get to come to those it's dinners, right? It's good to see you. Man, it's good to see you. Wow. All right. Let's keep going. I'm so, so excited. Okay, good. Kelly's coming back in. So there's a little tech issue with my Chromebook. It is frozen the screen here, but I have my other computer rolling. So hopefully I'll be able to move everyone according to where they need to be uh, on technology anyway. But yes, Karen will be here September 8th, 9th, and 10th for the New Mexico Poetry Summit. Uh, Rich Boucher will be here. AJ Houston, who's in the house. AJ, if you want on the open mic list, let me know. Uh, for anyone who's in the room, AJ will be here. Shocky will yes, be ma here. There's yes, 20... All right, AJ, I got you. Uh, there's going to be 23 featured readers on Saturday. Sunday is the VIP Tesoro Champagne Show. Uh, tickets are on sale, red or greenbooks.com, red, R-E-A-D. Get your tickets, just get here. Like, I can't stress to you how important it is to be here, uh, how this is really perhaps a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see these incredible human beings all in one place. Uh, so please, please, please just get here. Uh, there's a limited number of tickets being sold, so you got to get your tickets. Uh, now, normally, if we were in a brewery or a cafe, we'd be passing around the hat We'd ask everyone to put a couple dollars in the hat or tip the, the readers tonight, uh, but uh, so we don't have that. But we do have virtual cash uh, tips for the features. You could uh, just straight out order Karen Garibrand's book, which I strongly suggest you do. Uh, she has one of the most interesting covers that I've ever done uh, here at Red or Green Books that I've ever seen come through, and I love it. It is so absolutely monumentally and epically Karen. Uh, uh, so please get a copy of her book. Her work is standalone. Any any page you turn to, you're going to read something that you absolutely want to just turn the page and get to the next one. So bless her by by picking up a copy of her book. If you cannot do that, put a couple bucks in her cash app, right? Buy her a cup of coffee, buy her a gallon of gas. Just don't do nothing. A lot of us, we go to a bunch of these online open mics, a lot of these online events, and it's difficult for us to tip, uh, tip a lot to these featured readers every time, right? Because we think we have to do everything all the time. But we don't. Uh, if we just do a little bit, Every time, all of us, a, a lot of a lot of great things happen. And if you're thinking in the back of your mind, well, I'm not going to send Karen Garibrand two or three dollars because that makes me fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong. Because if everybody said that, actually said her two or three dollars, right? She would be a lot richer than she is today. So just bless her cash app. It is Karen Garibrand. K-A-R-E-N-G-A-R-R-A-B-R-A-N-T. Uh, if uh, Karen, if you have a, a PayPal, you can drop that in. If you don't have Cash App, you can PayPal us. Reach out to us here at Word is Right or Red or Green Books. You can send us PayPal, Zella, whatever you've got. I've even had poets mail me cashier's checks, money orders, cash, and I have forwarded that on to the featured readers. There is zero excuse uh, not to tip our featured readers tonight. So, uh, but however, I would just say, you know, go buy her book. Just go buy her book. All right, let's go. See Santos. 
You are up next, followed by Shocky G, David Foreman, Nikki Gray, AJ Houston. Somewhere in there, we will bring up our second reader. Karen Scott is here tonight. Uh, and I'm so super psyched about that. So, uh, CC, uh, excuse me, C Santos, are you ready? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Perfect. Okay, because I have headphones on, but there's no mic. <laughs> Okay, um, this poem is called No Stranger. It is brand new and it's still a work in progress, so it's not perfect, but no stranger. I am not a stranger to the rain that pours deep within my soul, the thunderous sound in my head, a voice that says, I will never be. I am not enough, not for you, not for me. I am not a stranger to the looks of disgust or confusion because you do not agree or understand my outer appearance. If you cannot accept my outer, why do you feel entitled to my inner, my inner voice, my inner thoughts, my inner thighs? My soul is not for you, it is for me. You are not entitled to my flesh just because I flashed you a smile or showed some skin. My body belongs to me. I am not a stranger to the chaos of life, carrying one's burdens while trying to bury mine. Playing house, because we rather go through heartache instead of learning how to grow alone, heal alone. I am not a stranger to wanting to soar, wanting to spread my wings and experience more. To lonely nights, suicidal cries, passionate fights, cutting ties. I am not a stranger to the dark. Just look at my scars. That is my blood on your hands as your words attack like a shark. My dreams are always out of reach, much like my faith in you, Lord, no matter how many times I'm on my knees. I am not a stranger to being ignored and looked past, seeing my fat before you see me. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Why does no one see mine? I am not a stranger to love, devotion, living the family life. I am, however, am a stranger to peace, genuine joy. My mind never gets a moment of silence. There's too much negative noise. I am not a stranger to confident insecurities, internal war. Still, you will not silence me. I will be seen and heard. You will see me as more than this fat body. We are more than we give ourselves credit for. And I have one more if I have time. This one is called I have a lot of Dear God poems. This is one of them. Dear God, it's been a while. Can you hear me? I am the sound that shakes the sky before the rain falls. That loud pounding noise as the water hits your windows. Those are my tears that hit the ground as everyone rushes away to stay dry. Do you see me, God? Everyone sees past me as if this fat body is transparent. Even when my clothes are loud, still no one sees me. Lord, I am trying to be still, but stillness won't have me. Breathe life into me. My lungs are filled with insecurities. My lips full of doubt. My brain is too high up in the clouds. I whisper your name, yet lower my head in shame because I keep allowing others 
to darken my days. God, are you real? Are you there? I cannot handle any more of the lies and devastating cries of, please, God, take me. I don't want this life. Who am I to survive? I just want to feel alive. See that armor of faith? It's broken. I gasp for breath. My walls are crumbling. Do you feel me, Lord? I try to wrap my arm around you and embrace you, but you are not there, are you? That's it. That's all I have. Yes, let's go. I mean, your mic. Get over, see Santo. That was let's awesome. Go. Yes. Yeah. Right, Karen? Oh, my God. See, I want to buy your book. And if you don't have a book, we need to remedy that right away, like immediately, like yesterday. I don't have a book yet. <laughs> No, but I want to so bad. All right, so then Karen, you gotta hook her up with me because uh, we got we got a list for next year. So let's go. Uh, I'm so excited. I love it. You know what? And um, you would love Kimberly Adana. You know, she's another poet who published. She does talk a lot about that, uh, about her body and about feeling very invisible. And I love this group of women that who we have on this launch. It's just, it's so exciting. Uh, it's so wonderful. Let's go. All right, so see, yes, I'll drop my email in the chat. Send me an email. All right, next up we got Shocky G, the poet. Uh, Shocky's book actually just came out and it just arrived. I've got it here. Uh, Shocky G's uh, book, In Lieu of Flowers, it arrived uh, a couple weeks ago, like a week and a week and a half ago. So we've been reading it uh, quite a bit on social media. And uh, so I'm super excited that uh, we get to see Shocky G's book come to life and be part of this, uh, part of this launch. Yes, uh, Generalissimo, I got you. Uh, if anyone would like to read who uh, is just joining us, uh, welcome Jeff Taylor, welcome Generalissimo. I don't know where uh, Dane is because Dane had wanted to come and I sent him the direct link. So I wonder if Dane got hung up or if he got his times wrong. So Generalissimo, maybe reach out to Dane and say, dude, we're in the show an hour already so uh he can come and, and join us all right let's go uh yes yes rich what a night we have going on tonight all right shocky g followed by david foreman how are you doing on time uh then let's see wow really okay so we'll go shocky g and david then we're gonna break we're gonna bring up uh karen scott and then we'll, mm -hmm. we're gonna go back to the open mic list we have nikki gray aj houston priceless black and generalissimo brian franco like don't don't go anywhere the the open mic list is star studded uh tonight as well so it, very very blessed this evening to have so many incredible readers uh on the open mic shaki are you ready yeah hi hi um, so I'm just going to open to a random page and read. I guess I should have pulled one up sooner, sorry. All right, um, so this one, it opened to page 19, which is generational trauma. So you guys may have heard it before, but I'm going to read it. Recent studies show in areas where elephants are poached and killed for their tusks to make ivory, elephants have evolved so that 50% of females are now born without tusks. The trauma caused by humans has forced evolution. I stand in the mirror and wonder what parts of me my daughter will shed to survive. Parts of me fears she will, has given up life at all and therefore she will never come to be afraid of all the trauma I have faced in this life. I think of my uncle Bud, born blind, and wonder if maybe he didn't want to see the injustices of this world, or those born deaf, if they decided the screams for freedom were far too deafening. It seems we carry more than babies in our wombs, which is to say, I am pregnant with grief. Some days I carry lonely in my uterus as if it only belongs to me. I feel it kick, and grow, remind me of its presence. I often wonder if it's too late to abort the pain, pray for a stillbirth. I wonder how many times elephants had to swallow fear before it became a fetus. 
If a mother looked at her tuskless daughter and worried about how she would fight back before realizing she wouldn't have to, how she couldn't change the world, but gave birth to a new one, how I cannot change the world, but I'm afraid there isn't a new one coming. So um, that is out of my book in lieu of flowers. Um, you can get it on my website, shockygpoetry.com. And uh, there's other stuff on there. So just check it out. Thanks. Let's go. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for Shocky G. Oh my God. Let's keep going. Yeah. All right. So at Red or Green Books, another thing that we do that's a lot of fun is book club. Uh, each month we feature a different book. It's all volunteer, first come, first serve. Uh, Shocky will be our October uh, featured book club author. And uh, so this month, we're in July. This month is Stephanie Eisler Vance and her book Made of You. And the third Sunday each month, we do an author talk. And it is an hour interview and a featured set of a reading by the author. And there's a $5 coupon every single month for the book uh, that is being featured in book club. So if you if you've never read any of these po these books or these posts, you've never met them, it's a great opportunity to get to know some of the posts we've published and hear, hear their work. Uh, all of the past book club authors are up on the YouTube page, Red or Green Books YouTube page, also our Facebook page, if you would like to check them out. All right, uh, wait, I see Jeff Taylor. Yeah, Jeff Taylor, I got you. Uh, Jeff Taylor in the house. Let's go. I haven't seen that guy in a hot minute. Jeff Taylor, I got you added to the open mic list. I'm sorry I have to go after Generalissimo. Uh, but it's so far, I've got uh, David coming up now. Then we're going to break for Karen Scott. I got Nikki, AJ, Priceless, Generalissimo, and then Jeff Taylor. If I missed anyone, please uh, let me know and I will get to you. David, are you ready? I am. Thanks. Thanks for your patience. Prior to departure. Lena remembers when we were on a plane, and I, not wanting her to chew her gum yet, invented a game. We, used, we each used our gum and wrapper and took turns imagining them into things. This is a baby wrapped in a blanket. This is a flagpole. This is a diving board. This is me lying on a towel at the beach. It makes me think I was happy once, a good dad who loved his daughter. No worry worse than that she would use up her gum before her ears popped. This is a stretcher. This is a suitcase. This is a bill in an envelope. This is a coffin. This is a frozen dinner. This is a poem. And uh, I'll read one more. Ooh. I'm not used to reading off screens, but let's do it. Okay, um, it's sort of like my ADD poem. In no particular order. He's dying. He's still in his Tigers Little League uniform. He looks at his second wife and sees his first wife. He looks at the girl who will become his first wife and knows he has blown whatever chance he might have had with her. His leg hurts. Houses fill with small appliances. A space heater sounds like the wind. Generations of moths in England grow darker again or grow lighter again. He cannot remember which. There's a moment when you believe if you can do one small thing perfectly, everything will be okay. Piles of paper in no particular order. He's aware tax day is coming. For him, it's not the money, but the coerced reconstruction of a year, the account of what he did and did not do and when. He believes that at the end of days, all accounts will be abandoned. He writes in his journal on the subway. He remembers stamps, sending and receiving long handwritten letters. Recently, he found one from a girl obviously smitten with him, whose name summons nothing. He is bargaining with a buyer over book prices at a yard sale, getting ready to move out of Boston. He is at his grandparents' house for Pesach. He's in the audience at his daughter's play. He is looking out a picture window. He is always looking, looking through a camera, looking on the screen, reading. He doesn't see words, but is watching the story from inside. 
He rarely goes to movies. They hold him too hard. He has to fight to look away. He is walking out of a Dracula movie, eight years old, walking home the long way. He is walking on the Appalachian Trail, walking in Paris, in New York City, in endless adolescent nights past rich suburban houses, walking in ski boots, walking in sandals in Israel, walking with a cane. Now he is walking barefoot with his lover in the water at the Roy H. Park Preserve on a hot summer day after walking through a meadow full of butterflies, but before hearing a warbler at the beginning of the great happiness that succeeded his catastrophe, a joy that could not have come in any other order with anyone else at any other time. Thank you. Ah. Oh. Let's go, David. Yes, I'm so glad to oh welcome, welcome. The word is right. And read a green book. Yeah, Karen, go ahead. Okay, I just want to make sure I was giving everyone a chance to uh, to 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 comment. Y'all can unmute your mics and cheer on David if you would like. It's it's yeah, fine. Cheer on David. Especially that last couple of lines. Holy crap! Nicely done, David. Thanks. Nicely done. Yeah, David. That was, was a tour around everywhere, wasn't it? <laughs> right, I AJ. It. I have right. Yeah. This is amazing. You should come to New Mexico uh, for the summit. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know where I don't know where everyone is is yeah. is in the country. So welcome, Jane Spoken Word is here. Jane Spoken Word, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, Rachel Garcia. Rachel, I got you added to the list. If anyone else wants to read uh tonight, please let me know and I will get you on the list. All right, so if you're just joining us, uh, welcome. This is our double feature open mic. We have Karen Garibrand and Karen Scott. It just fortuitously, kismetly uh, happened to be this way. And uh, we heard from Karen Garibrand earlier. We're gonna hear from Karen Scott. Now, if you want to see the, the recording, you wanna go back and, and, and catch, maybe if you're coming a little bit late today, you wanna catch it. Uh, we, it'll be available on the Red or Green Books Facebook page. We're also going to take that and upload it to the YouTube page for Word is Right and for Red or Green Books. Karen Garibrand is one of our 2023 debut authors. Uh, so this is her opportunity to kind of really shine and open up and uh, display a lot of what we can expect from her in her debut poetry collection this year. And Karen Scott, like, there, there is nothing I can say. I mean, I got her bio pulled up, but like, this woman, I don't know, from the first day I met Karen Scott, I knew she was she was going to light my life up. Uh, sometimes you meet those people and you're just like instantly drawn to them. I think she lights up every room she's in, mostly because she gets really embarrassed when I say that. And that makes me happy, not that she's embarrassed, but because it makes her smile really big. And then it lights up the room more. And it's kind of like Monsters, Inc. at the end, you know, where all the laughing creates more energy. I think that that is how it goes with Karen Scott. The happier she is, the more energy I feel. And uh, she never ceases to amaze me in her sharp wit uh, and her incredible, incredible poetry. So when she said yes to come do this double feature, I was like, oh my God, it's Karen Scott. That's my inner, that's my inner excitement. All right, here we go. All, <laughs> all of the bios also you can, uh, you can catch at The Word is Right and Red or Green Books, our Facebook event pages for tonight. Karen Scott is a poet living in Columbus, Ohio. She's a member, supporter of Ohio Poetry Association, a past participant in the Women of Appalachia Project, and a proud member of the Salon Writing Group. Her work has been published in Common Threads and annual OPA members anthologies. Women Speaks, Women of Appalachia, and, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing Appalachia, Appalachia wrong, it is an, and not an intentious, intentional thing. Delirious, a poetic celebration of Prince 2016, Sun and Shadow, Wood and Stone 2022, the inaugural issue of Northern Appalachia Review 2020, and Quasarine published by OPAW L. She has been included in the following anthologies, American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence, which is one of the anthologies we put out this year, uh, the Dead Poets, po the Dead Pets Poetry Anthology by Transcendent Zero Press, and the final issue of Put uh, Pudding Magazine, Monsters, and Mo Lisquo. I'm gonna murder it. Uh, we're published on the Moontide Press website, 
As Poet of the Month, August 2022, you can catch her on Facebook, Karen.Scott72, Instagram, Stills, uh, excuse me, Still Smart Girls with the URLZ Mom. And of course, her PayPal is Karen s 454 y'all unmute your mics give a huge warm welcome to our second feature reader tonight the one and only miss karen well actually my actual response to marissa was hell yes and i get to read with karen g too i love it so yeah I was definitely happy and honored to be asked. Um, my poems are mostly memoir and melancholy. And then I go on a total other end of the spectrum and just have uh, little whim poems. But um, I'm gonna start with the sad shit and get it out of the way. Um, the if you do not have a copy of American Graveyard, be sure to get it. And I'm going to read for you my contribution to it. And it was written in response to the mass shooting in Uvalde. And since the shootings don't seem to stop, um, I'm sure there will be another volume, right, Marissa? Is it still called a cento if some of the lines are your own? He was a good big brother, a natural leader, an eager learner. She was on the honor roll. They were athletes, a softball all-star, soccer players, swimmers. She was a sweet, smart, shy tomboy, a good friend. She loved her cat. She was a planner, already planning her quinceanera. She had just received her first communion. He stole them away from us. She wanted to be a cheerleader. She wanted to be a lawyer. She was going to be a marine biologist. He wanted to be a police officer to protect other people. She wanted to be a veterinarian. She loved to draw. She wanted to be an art teacher. She was practicing photography. She wanted to visit Australia. He stole their futures, their possibilities. She had been married 24 years to her high school sweetheart. He died of a broken heart two days later. They called it a heart attack. He brewed his grandparents a pot of coffee every morning. She called her daughter every day at 4.30 as she left the school. Her daughter posted, I don't know how to do this life without you, but I will take care of dad. I will take care of our dogs and I will forever say your name. She tried to call 911. Instead of taking or destroying her phone, the murderer shot her. Her favorite color was blue, especially on butterflies. She enjoyed fishing with her dad. Her father drove her to school each day. She didn't want to go to school that day as if she knew something bad was going to happen. Her favorite color, the same as mine, green, she enjoyed reading on the couch like me. I can't fathom having to identify my child by DNA. In a state that has already disrupted so many children's lives, politicians at microphones say, our hearts go out to the parents. The crowds chant, do something, do something, please do something. The only thing that happens is more killing. She dreamed of going to art school in Paris. So that's American Graveyard. Be sure to get a copy if you don't have one. The next one is called Monsters. And it has an epigraph uh, from Eric Church and Jeff Hyde from Eric Church's song, Monsters. I've learned that the monsters ain't underneath the bed. The headline, six-year-old found dead after disappearing from front yard, validates my fears, justifies years of not allowing my daughter to play in our front yard or roam the neighborhood, only letting her play in the backyard if the dog or I were out there. My fears fueled by the statistic that every 40 seconds, a child goes missing somewhere in the US. 
I used to read King and Koontz, reveal in horror and suspense, but the day I became a mother, that came to an end. The first day I took my infant to a festival, I wondered later that night, how many psychopaths have I exposed her to today? A true crime aficionado, I know bright lights attract monsters more than porch lights attract moths. Monsters do not understand the light, seek out the pure and innocent to maim, defile, destroy. And my daughter is a very bright light. Souls gravitate toward her like the dead gravitated to the little girl in Poltergeist. There's a proverb that says, to be a mother is to have your heart forever walk around outside your body. We want to protect them from everything, but can't really protect them from anything at any age. No matter how old they get, a monster is waiting. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to go with this one. I'm, I'm doing a little more, a few more ekphrastic poems. And then what I'm thinking about is doing a series, like going through my photos and writing poems about the, about the photos. And this one is called Glamour. And that's me. And that's my husband, my late husband. And this is called Glamour. We were glamorous once, your dad and I, long before you came. I made that dress, yes, I used to sew, floor length, one-shouldered with a contrasting sash. Your father not even trying to hide how uncomfortable he was in that three-piece suit. He's not smiling, I know, because he saved his smiles for me, made others earn them like rare treasures. This was before we moved to Baltimore. The news that a man was shot while dancing with his wife, his own wife, in a club ended our nights of going out. We partied with friends, but no more dancing in strange places and dark bars, no more nights on the town, which suited us just fine. No uncomfortable suits, no hand sewn gowns, but we were glamorous once. And uh, this one is called So Close. In the Cover Me Up video, a woman moves behind her lover, a veteran, as he stands shirtless at the kitchen sink. Her fingertips brush the jagged scar, the worn patch of flesh so clearly the healed over disruption of skin created by a sniper's bullet, an explosion in their lives. She gazes at the destruction, a look that says, I came this close to losing him. The same thought had me in tears in Baltimore when my husband Thomas came, arrived home later than expected. He held me, soothed me, told me softly that I was right to be alarmed. My fear was not irrational. Homicide is the number one killer of men in my age group. This was before racists felt more free to vent their hatred, unleashed their violence. A look, a turn down the wrong street, a look, a move in the wrong direction, before cops committed homicide with impunity, a traffic stop, a door breached at the wrong house. How many wives, lovers, mothers have looked upon their husbands, partners, sons with the same thought, I came this close to losing him. Meeting friends in a parking lot after work, a convenience store at the wrong moment, waiting to cross the street. He's safe at home now, but every day I come this close. Um, this one is called The Elm Tree and it, it's fairly recent. A huge elm tree stands at the back of my property. Every glance out window or door draws my eye to that tree. I used to love thunderstorms until I became a homeowner. Every time the wind makes the limbs flail and dance, I pray that elm will still be standing when the storm subsides. Its absence would devastate the landscape. 
A huge scar of heartwood shows it survived a lightning strike over a quarter of a century ago. Healed, scarred, it still stands. My husband was like that elm tree, solid, strong. Wherever we were, every glance drew my eyes to him. The lightning strike that hit a quarter of a century ago felled him and devastated my landscape. Granted a second chance at love, I would want another man like that elm tree, tall and solid enough to make me seem small, strong enough to, shatter, to shelter me from storms and heat of sun, generous like my elm tree, providing home and rest to birds and squirrels, our community, rooted, here to stay, a survivor. And the next one is Warrior, and it's fairly recent too. Warrior. When you date a warrior, you learn new ways to conduct yourself in public. No walking hand in hand, no slipping your hand in his hip pocket. Save such things for the safety of your homes. When you fall in love with a warrior, you learn a new way of moving through the world. Head on a swivel, ever alert. If you two give someone a ride, move to the back seat and plan a defense. When you live with a warrior, you communicate in silent code, subtle gestures, telepathic glances. You fall silently into formation, shift automatically into position, wait for a signal, act decisively. When you marry a warrior, you learn not to wake him with a kiss. You learn to tap him gently, calling his name softly, lest you find yourself screaming, I'm your wife, as his hand closes around your neck and you face his cocked fist. When you marry a warrior, you become one too. Walk a pace behind him in a crowd, allow him to cut a path as you play backup your daughter sandwiched in between. When your warrior falls in battle, you take up his standard, pen his epic sagas, defend his name, his child, your kingdom. You are a seasoned warrior in a deceptive package. No one knows how deadly you truly are. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to some, uh, <laughs> some lighter stuff. Um, this one is called Guardian of the Word. Don't you dare lay that book on its face, Wick hissed as I laid it down to look at his poem. It's not going to hurt it if I leave it steepled like this. At least I'm not cracking the spine. I understand his upset. I just find it a little extreme. We bookworms, lovers of the printed word, revel in the tactile sensations of reading the sight of print, the black ink against a clean white page, the feel of paper beneath fingertips, the smell of books, both old and new, the sound of pages flipping as we read. We're a judgmental bunch. I rarely write in workbooks. I get peeved at people who dog ear the page. Use a bookmark. And the self-appointed editor, complete with red pen, who went through the library book, adding page numbers purposely omitted by the paid editor, well, that person needs to be bitch slapped. And Marissa, this one's for you, because it's the closest that you're going to get to an erotic poem out of me, okay? <laughs> Do you love me? I ask as I smooth the hair behind his ears. A deep sigh from him as he looked deeply into my eyes. His beautiful brown ones betraying little as they gave a light shift to my right. Not very subtle, are you? I laughed as I reached out for the stack on the kitchen table. My Australian shepherd loves his dog biscuits too. And this one I wrote in a workshop um, given by Jaleesa. And it, you had to make a list of 
who did you have to ask permission from? What did you have to ask permission from? And it's based on the game, Mother May I? And um, what do you no longer want to ask permission? And what have you already learned to no longer ask for? And this is what came out of that. Mother, may I leave the table? May I have a snack? Mother, do I have to go to bed? Do I have to take a nap? Mother, may I have just five minutes more on the computer, the TV, or reading my book? Mother, mother, why the dirty look? All the things I no longer have to ask permission for, the freedom of adulthood and retirement. I no longer have to leave for work in all kinds of weather. I don't have to leave the house unless I want to. I've buried a husband and raised a child. I'm accountable to no one but myself. I do what I want when I want, even though the world would like to have a say. La 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 la, I can't hear you is the game I now play. And I am going to end with this one. It's a really old one of mine, but I enjoy it. So that's what I'm going to end with. Um, I, but when I had cable, <laughs> I would, especially on Saturdays, like watch back to back sci-fi original movies and figure out what the theme of the day was, you know, is it shark day? Is it natural disasters, whatever. And this is called how to survive a sci-fi original movie. One, don't have sex. Everybody knows the first people to die in a horror movie is that horny couple who just finished humping like bunnies. Two, don't disobey your parents. If your dad, the chief of police told you not to go to that campground or to stay off the lake, he might know something you don't know. He's only trying to save your life. Don't lie. Say you're spending the night at your best friend's house and then sneak off to an island with your boyfriend. Again, see rule number one. Three, don't split up. That just makes it easier for the monster to pick you off one by one. Unless the leader is a douchebag, you don't need to follow a stupid person to your doom. In that situation, you may be better off alone. Four, don't be brave. Don't check out that noise. You really don't want to see what made it. Hunker down until daylight when you have half a chance of seeing what you're up against. Five, don't be an African-American. Everybody knows the black guy rarely, if ever, survives to the end of a horror movie sci-fi movie or war movie. The only one I can think of is LL Cool J in Deep Blue Sea. And that's probably because Samuel L. Jackson had already been eaten. Six, don't neglect your car maintenance. You will be glad when that engine starts on the first try and you get out of the way of the tornado or T-Rex or a horde of flying monkeys. Seven, don't accept rides from strangers. Seriously, have you not seen any episodes of Criminal Minds or The Hitcher? Eight, be alert. Expect something bad to happen. Nine, if you're running, don't trip over your own feet. Once you're down, it's all over. Ten, if you don't know what it is, for Pete's sake, don't poke at it with a stick. 11, be resourceful. Know how to make a basic Molotov cocktail, a simple frag bomb, a spear. Befriend the nerd. He might know something that will save all of you. 12, shut the fuck up. Now is not the time to be running around screaming and calling for your dead friends. All that noise you're making, you won't be able to hear your doom creeping up on you. And 13, be sure to look up. All right, thank you all. 
Oh my God, let's go. You guys love your trip, Mike. Give it up for the one and only Karen. Scott, let's go. Members. How did you know I only look at horror and sci-fi movies? How did you know I only look at horror and sci-fi movies? <laughs> hey, that's the thing, you know? <laughs> Befriend the nerd, right? Oh my God, the chat is just so fun. I was like study explosives. <laughs> Learn to make a Molotov cocktail for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go. So much fun. I just love it. All right, y'all. So, you know, we'll do, I'll do the same, the same uh, spiel that I, I do for all of my featured readers, right? If we were in a, a cafe or a brewery or we were an open mic, we'd have the hat that'd be passing around. I would say, hey, tip the poets, put a couple bucks in the hat. We're online, right? But we have a virtual hat. We have a virtual way to be able to tip our feature readers tonight. I was thoroughly entertained. Are you not entertained, right? Uh, if you are, please uh, put a couple dollars, buy, buy Karen a cup of coffee, buy her a gallon of gas, uh, buy her, you know, four, it's it's up to you. Uh, just don't do nothing, right? The key is don't do nothing. So often we feel overwhelmed. We have to do everything all the time. There's all these things we go to and you just can't do it all the time. And that's okay. Uh, but if you can put a couple dollars in the hat for the Karen and the Karen, uh, the Karen G and the Karen S, uh, that is a, a wonderful turnout for these featured readers tonight. There's 23 people in the room. Even if everybody only put $2 in the hat for Karen Garibrand and $2 in the hat for Karen Scott. That is a, a lovely tip for our feature readers tonight. Just don't do nothing, right? That is the takeaway uh, for tonight. Just don't do nothing. Uh, Karen Scott's PayPal is Karen S454. If you do not have PayPal, you have Cash App, Venmo, Zella, something else, Carrier Pigeon, Firstborn, uh, you can mail a check in also. There's zero reason why you can't be tipping our featured readers. Uh, this evening. And I believe if I, there we go. So Karen Garibrand's cash app is Karen Garibrand. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, right? And then Karen Scott's PayPal is Karen S like Scott 454. If you do not have those, reach out to us, red or green books, or the word is right, and we will absolutely uh, forward on tips to the, the featured poets tonight. Uh, otherwise, we're saying, please just buy Karen Garibrand's book that, uh, you know, tonight is a lot of uh, pushing up her book, uh, beginning to celebrate her work. Uh, she launches her debut poetry collection here at Red or Green Books. We're super, super excited to have her. So just, you know, get your pre-orders in. All right, we're going to go back to the open mic list because it's not stopping. It, there is, is so much uh, happening here. Now, uh, AJ, I do not see Priceless in the room. Uh, so if Price still has issues getting on the list, uh, we will forego his, uh, his being well, well, on the list. Well, he's going to use mine because his phone was messing up in some. Okay, all right. So I'll I'll, I'll take prices off. So uh, so Priceless Black has a has a workshop every month here at the Word Is Right. He does incredible things uh, for his community in Wisconsin. So it's just yeah, we're so honored and blessed to have Priceless Black. Well, there is an epigraphic workshop happening next Friday night. Uh, it is we're going to be studying Priceless Black's poem. Uh, the revolution will not be your favorite pastime, and so we're going to be writing to that. So make sure you come for for that if you can. All right, open mic list reads as follows. Nikki Gray, AJ Houston, generally Simone Brian Franco, Jeff Taylor, RJ Owens, and Rachel Garcia. If I missed anyone uh, who would like to read, let me know. I will get you on the open mic. My deepest apologies. Sometimes the chat moves faster than my eyes. It is not intentional, but I will get you on if you would like. Uh, Nikki, are you ready to read? Absolutely. Hi, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Uh, this is titled, What If? Take a deep breath. I'm going to count backwards from 10. And when I snap my fingers, you'll awake. When you wake, you'll be 13 again, riding your bike like you've done countless times. Today, you'll do so, and this time, you won't get hit by a drunk driver. Won't awake surrounded by people telling you not to move won't panic that you'll get in trouble because you got into an accident, won't see your brother in the crowd crying, won't become afraid trapped in the back of the ambulance, dark 
and barely lit. You won't beg the paramedic to not let you die. Hear them tell you you'll be fine. Won't fear this is a lie. And then nothing. Time won't skip around you. You won't hear the doctor say in amazement, you should have died. Time skip. Or hear it said, she has fluid on her brain and spinal cord, time skip. Won't hear your mother cry. Feel bad that you can't seem to keep your eyes open. Move your mouth to tell her you're sorry, that you weren't more careful because you believe this was your fault, time skip. New hospital room, time skip. Meds, time skip. TV playing, time skip. 34 years later, I'm still waiting for the countdown, 10 to not be paralyzed behind the wheel of a car, not feel the trepidation when wondering if I'm in between the lines too far to the left must correct, watch the car behind me drift back, create distance, feel shame because I think they think I'm a danger, that I can't drive, don't know how to drive, nine. Wish I didn't feel like an important rite of passage was taken from me, no sweet 16 with permit in hand, no driving lessons, no rushing to school to show off my newly acquired license, the license I still don't have eight. Feel the burden of asking for rides, basing activities on the level of difficulty getting to them, jobs on their MARTA accessibility, or figuring out the cost of a lift to and from seven. I gasp when coming up on a car quickly, involuntarily gripping the door handle when going faster than my internal gauge says is safe six. Watch addicts obsessed with speed weave in and out of traffic. Their hurry blurring lanes of travel, accidents too commonplace, metal or flesh, casualties are to be expected five. I dream of it being easy, driving, here and there, envy those that don't have my fear, my trauma with cars insistent on connecting with my body for age 21, hit by a 16 year old kid on the way to pick up my sons from daycare, celebrate my youngest birthday. I was walking this time in the crosswalk. Three, age unknown, T-boned on my side, knee trapped between door and dashboard, other driver not paying attention, ran the red light. Two, age unknown, hydroplane at the top of Spaghetti Junction, spin out across four lanes of traffic, slam into the wall, surprised we didn't go over, grateful to still be alive. One, I know the snap will never come, that I can never go back, erase that moment moments, take away those fears, be as cavalier as others behind the wheel of a car, or maybe I don't want to, to become the monster I dread. Just wanna be not as quicksand stuck in my fears. Maybe I just want that. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my Ooh. God, Nikki Gray, y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for Nikki, please. Oh my God, it's so great Woo. to hear you, Nikki. Oh my Woo. God, that's All so right. good. Yeah. All right, like your Chris book. said, darling Read Nikki, darling too. Nikki. <clears throat> And feel free to drop your social media stuff in the chat so y'all can follow each other. I love when we are at these crossroads of uh, different types of platforms and different communities uh, where people reach each other, find each other, uh, connect with each other. It's one of the big reasons why we publish in group launches at Red or Green Books because it puts us uh, across the platforms of so many different incredibly amazing people. And I've held the hand of uh, people dying from car accidents and then being mangled up on the side of the road before. So I absolutely feel a hundred million percent. I've had to be in the back of, a, of an ambulance begging for my life to be saved. So I, um, I feel that. And um, if you if you ever want to do a book project, you let me know. I'd be, uh, I'd be honored to help you with that. All right. Uh, next up is the one and only AJ Houston. Damn it. Damn it, AJ. It made me, you made me drop my pen. You made me drop my pen just even saying your name. Uh, I fumble. 
it's, it's I've had this 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 man and I we're together every morning it seems like in many nights. <laughs> Although <laughs> Uh, only online and only in a professional manner. Uh, AJ is I incredible. Uh, AJ is in our American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence. His book, his his poem actually is is the first poem in the book. Uh, uh, he's also he does this incredible show on Instagram, seven oh seven every single morning. He is on Instagram, uh, doing poetry and talking about things, and it's just amazing and uh he's my wonderful co-host i hope he does uh well i'm his wonderful co-host <laughs> i not, hope he had, he had the right he had the right the first one <laughs> i hope he comes to word is right and does the band book club with us that would be so dope so much fun uh you can see a lot of aj's work in the past here at word is right and red or green books uh we just absolutely love him and then after aj with generalissimo who is also a, a host here at word is right we have jeff taylor rj owens and rachel garcia to round us out tonight are you ready aj yes i am hi i have a i have a poem um you want a brand new piece or you want the piece I just finished probably 20, 20 minutes ago or you want uh, Which one I'm is second year? No, shit. <laughs> Which one is sexier? Which one is sexier? Um, <laughs> I, I don't think anyone of us. Uh, if I read it, will it be sexy? Probably everything you read is sexy. <laughs> No, it's so, all right. So whatever you're not going to read tomorrow morning, read tonight. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read this. Uh, the title of this poem is Used to Be. I'm working on, I'm, this is my next poem I'm memorizing. So it's Used to Be. In order to black and man simultaneously, you would need an American signature, someone in authority, white, I mean, in charge, white, I mean, with privilege, white. Must sign the document declaring you man. Used to be, you couldn't black by yourself. Or, or with friends, with family in group settings, couldn't black by yourself if you considered yourself male. Used to be there were towns you prayed the sun stayed long enough, just long enough for you to get out of safely. Once upon a time, long ago, I mean, about a year back. Do not mention yesterday's, a couple of tomorrows past, sometimes next week soon. Maybe in the minute preceding this one, could be some right now. There'll be another unarmed black, I mean, a white officer, I mean, an unemotional body dressed in dark blue uniform will again fear for his life, his friends' lives, their cars. They would treat a black man, even if he's walking, he remains a paper silhouette downrange, used to be. You could hear the cage birds singing in their cages. You could hear them toe tapping in their ankle bracelets. You can listen to the harmony bouncing off the walls under deck. Used to be. You could stand on the shore and watch the bubbles burst from the million bone choir singing old Negro spirit spirituals from the bottom of the ocean. Used to be, you were not allowed to, I mean, America restricted the ability. This country forbade any person to black and woman simultaneously. Control their own bodies, being black and woman automatically made it harder to breathe. You can't female equal pay at any occupation, not CEO, not president, can't return to leave or make decisions no longer able to yes or no on decisions concerning your own uterus. America wants to force you to baby, even if you don't want to, used to be. Black girls couldn't dance, couldn't rainbow, couldn't color girl, used to be. Black girls couldn't magic out loud, couldn't hear the way God meant them to, could not beauty and curve in public without being harassed, without someone who believed themselves privileged, wanting to take advantage, used to be. Black boys couldn't black and boy simultaneously, couldn't whistle. Could not inside voice inside, could not kneel in reverence while the song is playing about black death, couldn't raise fist as if asking God, is it okay to the black man after putting your best foot forward used to be. We couldn't march while holding a sign. Can't ask for justice to show up with our outside voices even while standing outside. Used to be there were colored only water fountains and bathrooms. We were just colored, just Negro, not allowed to read or write. Couldn't school in public. There were laws banning us from reading and writing even now. Did he freeze or is it just me? 
No, he he froze. Froze. Oh, wait, AJ, go back. Go back, go back, go back like like five stanzas. Okay. Used to be, there were colored only water fountains and bathrooms. We were just colored. Just Negro, not allowed to read or write. Couldn't school in public. There were laws banning us from reading and writing. Even now, the books we've written are being removed. I remember a white man walking through my neighborhood with the goal of selling one encyclopedia at a time. My mother purchased one encyclopedia at a time and an accompanying book called Childcraft. That is where I learned nursery rhymes. Used to be, you could read whatever you wanted to read. You could locate most of the books you wanted in the library or your public school. The library librarian would do a decimal system, anything you asked. The titles were not banned or blocked or burned. Used to be they burned every one of us while enjoying a picnic. Kids watching, mother, son, father, daughter stood patiently for hours, enjoyed viewing Black death in process. Used to be we were not welcome here. Could not America in the daylight. We could only feel seeing at sunrise as we worked. Could not whistle, could not head high when we talked. Had to yes sir, no ma'am. Had to give respect when respect was not due. Did not need to guess about dinner or clocks or overtime. It wasn't called overtime, just labor free and labor. Used to be, we were not welcome here. Could not America at sundown or sun up, could not own property, could not self start or self in, could not black and father or black and man, could not black and woman or black and mother. Used to be, America used to be, this country is and used to be be tis of the sweet land of liberty but not for us used to be there was no here to start from the bottom of the song was ours until until it was confiscated until it was taken and offered to someone of a lighter complexion used to be the invention was ours until until the law stated we could no longer own patents the style was ours until it appeared on the cover of some magazine the town was ours until it became profitable. Can't count the number of townships bombed, washed away, free rate out of existence. Used to be, we the people did not mean we, because we were not considered people. We were fraction on purpose. Used to be, you cannot kick a black man out of the house of representatives without cause, could not evict without reason. Used to be, you couldn't black by yourself. If you were man, a woman, if you were girl, a boy, or they, or them, or whatever you wish to call yourself, the Bill of Rights is still in the mail. We have yet to pay for a price. Used to be, there was no up to aspire to reach. Everyone knew where the red lines were drawn, where, where the areas were written in black code, where banks were warned about that we were coming. Used to be, we were not welcome here, were told to go back where we came from, as if we were captains of our own kidnapped vessels, as if our names were not changed and our tongues were still intact, as if my DNA remembers which shore you stole us from. Used to be, America used to be, this country is and used to be, tis of the sweet land of liberty, but not for us. Oh, let's go. Unmute your mics. Give it up for AJ Houston. Damn, AJ. So good to hear you. Damn. That was fantastic. Woo! It's that good to you too, Karen. I, yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. The two Karens, y'all did an awesome job. Two Karens. I can call y'all two Karens, right? <laughs> Nicely done, AJ. As always, you stick the landing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so like glad we're all going to be here in New Mexico. Y'all, we're all going to be here in New Mexico in September. Get your tickets. Get here. You just have to get here. Like, I can't stress to you enough. If you don't, if you don't, if you haven't read the playbill, if you don't know who's coming here, who's going to be here, like, go to the website, look at, check it out. Come on. Like, I get to have AJ Houston every morning online. But we get to have him here, like in person at the summit. Uh, this man is is a, a life changer for so many of us, and um, and we get to be we get to be exposed to that, and we get to to do that. He has an incredible new book, uh, the Black Book of Black. Uh, it is the Black Bible, he says. So make sure you know, drop your stuff in the chat, AJ, so people can find you, follow you. If you're not doing it. You got to, like, it is too important not to fucking do it. You have to do it. Uh, he is, he's too important to our community to not be following every day. And I don't know anyone else who would get up 600 days in a row and at that fucking hour, 
<laughs> it's early, you guys. 707 Pacific is early for those of us in the middle of the country. Uh, so, yeah, get to get to his stuff online. All right, we got Generalissimo Brian Franco, Jeff Taylor, RJ Owens, and Rachel Garcia to round us out tonight. And then uh, don't forget this recording is being live streamed on the Red or Green Books Facebook page. It'll be uploaded to YouTube for Red or Green Books and the word is right. So go, uh, please, if you have not done so yet, please Go check us out, like, share, subscribe, follow everything YouTube. There's hundreds of videos up there. Uh, just the, the amount of people who have, who have come through these doors is just uh, extraordinary. So thank you for being part of that, each and every one of you. G, G are you ready? Yes, yes, I'm ready. I, and I'm the generally... Generally, Simo Brian Franco has an incredible book, Everything I Think Is All in My Mind, which was released 2021 here at Red or Green Books. And he also is the host with the most of Cafe Generally Simo, the first and third Monday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. I just had to plug you, G. There you go. Thank you. Well, I want to say about this first poem, it was not written about Terry Rose Jertsen. Um because every time I read a, po a love poem or something similar to a love poem, I have to say it wasn't about Terry Rose Jertsen. That's my new rule. Um, it's called um, Atomic Whiplash. You know when, how in cop shows, when a house is booby-trapped with explosives, people get out just in time to not be blown up, but just in time to be thrown into the air from the front steps, then they always rise from the ground, usually with minor injuries. In real life, when someone gets thrown by explosive force, they will likely need at least a neck brace for the whiplash. When I met you, the second you walked away, my body flew an unknown amount of miles. You were an atomic bomb that blew up in my heart. The emotional whiplash of the infatuation I suffered slammed my heart against the walls of my psyche as if you were a fish hook dipped in worm smoothie and I was an unsuspecting catfish who recently rose from the muck and mire of the riverbed. You were my savior walking on water, making me jump in the air to greet you till my gills needed resuscitation. When you allowed me back in the water, unbeknownst to me, you had turned water to wine, leaving me in a drunken existence lest I tried to breathe air, which is not advantageous to a catfish. But at least if I ever eat an actual worm on an actual hook, whoever grills me up, will have a catfish steak marinated in wine with notes of infatuation and whiplash. I've got two more poems, and because Karen, I miss, I'm sorry, I missed you, Karen, Karen Garbrandt. Um, these are two food poems for Karen Garbrandt. The first is called Elegy or Eulogy for a Grape. The sapphire grape was delicious. It was sweet with a slight edge of whininess. Its prettiness preceded itself. Its sleek, lanky physique and purple, almost black skin had other varieties of grapes accusing it of perpetuating unrealistic standards of beauty. This grape would have been tasty and jelly, smashed by toes into wine, roasted to accompany a zatar rub grilled lamb chop, or frozen as ice in a signature drink in a celebrity chef gastropub. Instead, it came to its demise by virtue of my teeth to pleasure my insatiable sweet tooth, of course, it was able to, I was able to make sure it wasn't alone by devouring at least a dozen of its closest friends. And finally, I'll do this piece called Egg. When I cracked your shell to make my breakfast, was I committing murder? When do eggs cease being viable chickens? When I sprayed the pan with olive oil then sprinkled nutritional yeast and white pepper onto the area of the pan your insides would fall onto, then you sizzled as you hit the center of the hot surface. Then I broke the yolk almost immediately with the edge of the spatula I would flip you with, then lowered you onto a sesame bagel with melted provolone, toasting away open-faced in the toaster oven, awaiting this former chick-to-be to be placed atop the melty cheese, then topped it off with fresh baby spinach and raw onion against the top half which has melted Munster cheese on its underside. Then I held the package tightly like a vice grip with my hands to compress everything inside in order to placate my taste buds and provide nutritional sustenance, which will be accompanied by hot Earl Grey tea or ice cold apple cider between bites in order to get my day started with healthy food. I never thought about the 11 remaining chicks to be, 
sitting in a cardboard egg carton in my fridge awaiting their fate. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go, Generalissimo! Oh, I hope it's not murder, right? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Generalissimo. Oh my God, please get his book. Everything I think is all in my mind. I absolutely love, love, love his book. It is such a wonderful, wonderful book. All right, we're going to keep rocking and rolling to tonight. We got Jeff Taylor, RJ Owens, and Rachel Garcia finishing us out tonight. Uh, Jeff Taylor, are you ready? I'm ready. Hi. All right. So yeah, uh, good good to see everybody. Uh, um, excellent features. Really enjoyed everybody's poems tonight. Um, so I'm gonna read a poem of mine from the Bloodshed Review. You can get a copy for five dollars at Poetic Poetic Anarchy, Anarchy Press. And um, in in the in the middle here is um, fornicating with the elements from Shailen Marks is um. It's a chat book of hers. And then there's Mindy, Mindy Semmingson is one of the um, supporting poets. And then, and then um, I'm also one of the other supporting poets. I, I think there's a pretty cool format as they do like a larger like chat book from one person and then a couple of um, supporting poets. Yeah, I, I, I like the way they do that. So I'm gonna read my poem, Tobacco and Hash, that you can get in um, the Bloodshed Review issue one. <clears throat> Jen was a professional drunk, got killed by a rookie. What crap, what kind of crap career is that anyway? When Jen and I were in Florida, we paid too much for a joint of tobacco and hash. The spliff got too wet to smoke as we rain danced on the pier. Cyclones twisting around us. She overcame addiction only to have her life ended by someone who wasn't there yet. I like to think the woman who caused the accident was Jen's soulmate. They lived thousands of lives together through thousands of universes, weaving the possibilities of two beings colliding. The roar of this life reduced to the moment they floated towards each other, locking eyes before everything went black. Jen once told me she wanted all her friends to smoke her ashes so we wouldn't make the same mistakes she did. What if we all smoked our dead friend's ashes? Would there be an energy transference reverberating across generations, raising our collective consciousness to new levels of possibility? Would we take on the weight of each other's lives? That's uh, tobacco and hash, and um, yeah, check out Poetic Anarchy Press. You got get um some new work coming from them pretty soon. Be on the lookout. Thanks. Awesome. Can I, can I give a can I give Jeff a, pr a quick plug? Because yep. Jeff has made the short list for Bl Blood you Rag do. Magazine's Poet of the Year. You don't forget, Rich did also. Robert Fleming is he here? He's 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 no, on another. Robert Epp is not here tonight. But um, yeah, he's also on that list. Very good, awesome. No, so excited. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff Taylor. Uh, so glad to have you back here. I know everyone just we all love it when you come through. So thank you so much for being here. All right, next up we got R.J. Owens and then Rachel Garcia to finish us out tonight. Again, you can find this live on uh, Red or Green Books Facebook page. We'll be uploading it to both Red or Green Books and the Word Is Right's uh, YouTube page. So if you don't have Facebook, don't worry. Uh, we'll be uploading it to YouTube. So please uh, go and find that there. R.J., are you ready? Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Uh, here we go. I haven't written in a while. It's been two hours. Disassociation, disassociation setting in as the worlds pour out. Einstein's theory of relativity points that posits that more mass causes more curvature in space, meaning I have to take this roundabout way of describing myself back to myself in theory, saying myself a lot so I keep associating. 
a daily planner with the infinity scroll itinerary, creating enough space, condensing enough singularity, following enough threads um, and entanglements, birth new paths like the bank prints money at will. Uh, I'm getting off course, redirecting. Two black holes circling each other create waves of gravity that move outwards. And this is my way of saying I've stopped attempting to suck the light from everything, started to look at the other side. I've received ideas like Carver and Etta and Edison and found myself in them, enough to believe myself, to reference myself as a person and not a thing, writing a narrative that will not remain true even if the words do. Remain, remainders. A long division, uh, a letting myself seep into myself and subtracting what no longer works. I am told this is an endless process, a bloodletting of sorts, maybe, kinda. I've come to see the remainder as coordinates. The, a, and, articles, articles. A funny bone to pick at, a wishbone to snap with, pinning the needles on the discomfort of unintended contact and not on the discomfort of unintended birth. Yes, 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 yes. I know, my problem, not yours. Why do you think we've been talking about science and math? I haven't written in a while, it's been 30 seconds. Words stepping themselves down to my level, dancing in the curved space of my mind, that's how radios work. The stepping up and down frequency. Frequency and radios, probabilities and prose, words of multiple meanings averaged into a sentence. I, I mean the concept, not the grammatical tool. I average the concept until it's indivisible, until the disassociation eases into a book or a TV show. Pedia black hole in names and dates, the leads I plant to reclaim the parts of me that are unrecognizable, to break down the structures built by others. It's like the sensory deprivation wore off at 18. It's like the cannabis and alcohol aren't enough even in abundance. I stay up longer at a sleep glass because deprivation has been linked to drugs and I like to experiment. Channel delirium into my day and wonder how it isn't different from channeling sobriety. I want to create another wordplay reference here, but I already did and now this just seems superfluous. But I haven't written in a while since I finished those poems 10 minutes ago. It isn't satisfying yet. Productivity in relation to time, the linear concept I currently live by, not the delicious herb I drown rice in. Oh, there it is, the wordplay, not the juxtaposition of here, there, and now, not the juxtaposition of here, there, and now. Watch the entanglements print themselves like people print words at will and with intent lost to wild abandon a bandwidth, I meant. I feel like we're not on the same page. The informative concept, not the aid to a night. Intermittently switching between sand grains peppering my body like the delicious river that heals all. Achilles, sticks and stones may break my bones, but Sisyphean tasks will still irk me. I fall into a spiral that grooves like vinyl in my head. I take the cab Callaway this time and not the callous way of self-hatred, deciding not to swing so low as to miss my chariot. The world is not the Colosseum I was taught it was. I mean, the emotion, not the straw that broke the camel's back or the body of earth concealing the needle point of itself or whatever the fuck you think I mean. Thank you. Oh my God, let's go, RJ. Oh, and y'all unmute your Amazing. mic. Amazing. <laughs> yes, RJ, so good to hear you again. Woo awesome. Woo. What a star-studded night tonight has become. Oh my God, right? Let's go, RJ. Let's go. You you know, y'all ought to do a book together. Uh, <laughs> it would be so interesting if you either had one prompt and you both wrote to it, or you had like a book that was like back and forth, um, uh, response, 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 response. That would be such a dope book. I've never seen uh, anyone do books like that. So uh, let me know if that's something y'all want to do. I think it would be super exciting and interesting and unlike anything that's out there now. All right, here we go. Rachel Garcia, you are uh, last to finish us up tonight uh, right here from Albuquerque. I'm so, so excited. Uh, I've known Rachel for a long time now, and she's just so wonderful. 
and uh, and then we will do a toast. So don't go anywhere. Cause we'll do a toast as we close uh, the show tonight. Uh, so Rachel, you ready? Yes, ma'am. First of all, I just want to say I am absolutely loving tonight. All of you are doing amazing. I love you guys. And second of all, uh, this poem I wrote last night is the first one that I have written in probably about a year. Uh, I've had crazy rotters block and it's been driving me nuts. Alrighty. You always made assumptions about me, about what you thought I was going to do or what I was going to say. You made assumptions about what you thought I knew about you when I didn't know. You made assumptions about what I was supposed to know, how you felt. All these assumptions you made about me were wrong. We're all completely wrong. I've told you time and time again to stop. I've told you countless time I'm not I'm not a mind reader, but yet you, you still continued. Unless you ask me, unless you ask me directly, I won't know. You won't know. You, we are stuck in this revolving door simply because you won't ask. I assumed you knew. I assumed you felt. I assumed, I assumed, I assumed. And by I, I mean you. You'd get mad when you get mad when I finally and eventually snap. Eventually I'd say, stop, stop making assumptions because you're making yourself look look to be the first three letters of the of the word assume and ask. So please stop asking. So please stop assuming and just fucking ask. God damn, let's go. Let's go. Just fucking ask. Yo. Yes. Yes. I had to tell that to my ex-husband repeatedly. And I eventually just hold, held up a sign, you know, just, yeah, I eventually just held up the sign and said, stop being an ass. <laughs> just fucking ask. You're being an ass. <laughs> god damn. Let's go. Let's just fucking ask. Let's go. Oh, my God. I love it. The Albuquerque Poets showing up and showing out for our featured readers tonight. Thank you all so very, very much for being here. Uh, so excited to have everyone. If you have uh, ever thought about coming to New Mexico or, or not thought about coming to New Mexico, you don't need a passport. We speak English. We're part of the United States. It is totally fine. You can travel here. There's no travel ban. There's no warning. You won't get kidnapped. It's great. Uh, we are part of the U.S. So please uh, come in September if you would like. Uh, many of us who are in the room tonight are going to be here at the summit uh, in September. It is an incredible, incredible opportunity to see posts from around the world. Uh, literally, we have posts flying in from all over the country and uh, from Canada as well to to come and do poetry, not just poetry, but workshops and other things. Uh, so so think about it. Go to redorgreenbooks.com, red, R-E-A-D. Get your tickets. Uh, there is a limited number of tickets being sold for Saturday. Uh, VIP champagne show Sunday. Uh, so come be part of what we're doing. Uh, it's truly a once in a lifetime thing that all these posts are going to be in the same uh, room in the same city at the same time. Uh, it's blowing my mind still to this day. If you would like to tip our featured readers, please, please, please do so. Uh, Karen Garibrandt on Cash App, uh, Karen S454 on PayPal for Karen Scott. If you do not have PayPal, you don't have uh, Cash App, please reach out to us at Red or Green Books or The Word is Right, and we can figure out how to get the, the payment in so that we can forward that on to our featured readers. Even if it's only 2 or $3, don't think that that is not enough. Don't think that that is not worthy. It absolutely is. Please buy my cup of coffee. Buy my gallon gas do something just don't do nothing uh pre-orders for karen's book are available uh her book is going to print today uh so it's so exciting that she uh she said let's go and uh we're going to print today for her book so i'm so fucking excited i can't wait till it comes in I'm, yeah i'm so excited kelly's all excited too i can just feel i can feel the excitement uh so just you know be part of it uh, love uh onto the poets and who are in your community if you're interested in perhaps publishing a book of poetry with us reach out to me, Marissa at red or green uh, We are looking at uh, manuscripts for next year. Rick Spisak, who was here earlier, his book will be out uh, later this year. We're so, so excited for that. Not this Sunday, but a week from Sunday is our author talk with Stephanie Eisler Vance, who will be here uh, doing our author talk for her book, Made of You. And there's a $5 coupon every month for a book during book club. So you can get a book for $10, right? And and all of the sales in that month go directly to the author. So just do it, right? You wanna you wanna meet some of these posts, you wanna hear their work, you wanna hear their stories, like just it's 
just do it. Add to your collection, add to your library. Otherwise, uh, a raise the glass. Does everyone have a glass? Um, I toast at the end of my open mics uh, and wish everyone a wonderful night. I uh, will be back in uh, three in three weeks uh, for karaoke with Terry Rose Dirtson. I'm so excited. The last Saturday of the month here at Word is Right, uh, we have karaoke night with Terry Rose Dirtson. All right, here we go. Here's to health and your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain, for we may or may not ever all be here again. I invite you all to unmute your mics. Give it up for our two feature readers, Karen Garibrand, Karen Scott, tonight. Let's go! Wonderful job, features. Uh, also, praise to Wawa. I see Wawa on there. Holy mackerel. I know, right? <laughs> That's did you get an did you get an automatic Wawa sandwich yet? Bestly, yes. yes, all the Wawa and all the pretzels. <laughs> it's so exciting! It's so exciting! I'll see some of you in September. I'll see some of you next Sunday. Thank you all so much for being here at the Word Is Right. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. I'll see you all next time. Peace and blessings. Bye. 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 Thank you.